Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, I have this General Electric M250R from the 1960s, and today I'm going to show you this fixture. So I got this fixture a couple weeks ago with a bunch of other fixtures, including a Jocelyn Gumball, a Jocelyn Gumball Refractor, some Westinghouse parts, and a Revere Cat Eye. And today, the focus is this very nice fixture, which I really am glad I have. So this fixture came out in 1960, replacing the original M250. That fixture was basically an M400 with a plastic lens and a longer socket to accommodate a smaller 250 watt mercury vapor bulb. And then, after its release in 1960, it kept being made up until 1969, I believe, and it was replaced by the M250R1, which used a bail latch and was a smaller, cheaper fixture. So this fixture is very well stylized, and I really like the look of it. And it's a look that you don't see in today's fixtures. Even the HID ones are generally a lot more square, and they don't have as many curves and design elements. So, looking at the fixture here, we'll start looking at the top. And it's pretty simple. It's a very long fixture though. It has a pointy nose there. And it's got a photocell receptacle on top and that's really it. Other than this ridge that kind of looks nice and goes around the entire fixture. So the photocell socket here has a General Electric uh, shorting cap on it. It is, you'll see the logo there, but it's, it's a GE shorting cap, it works. And then under that, here's the Leviton uh, socket here, which was what they used on the early lights, and eventually they switched over to different, I believe, plastic photocell sockets. But these metal ones are really nice. So you just loosen those two screws and you can turn your socket so that you can point it north because the normal eyes on the photocells like this one are supposed to point north so then we'll flip over the fixture and see what's on the other side so here we go here's the bottom of the fixture and you'll see again some more of that design and this fixture in particular has silver paint because it's one of the earlier versions before they switched over to the Less exciting gray paint. I'm actually kind of surprised that it still has the paint on it. It's not. A, it's a pretty delicate paint, but it was on the bottom of the fixture. And when we look at the inside, you'll see it wasn't used probably that much. So we'll start here. It's got your typical uh, sort of thing here to secure the... You push this button in so you can release the door, but this helps if the door, if the latch fails, the door will not fall off, fall to the ground, and it will be able to just be shut and you won't lose that glass lens. Next here we have the big old GE logo and it's pretty deep, it's probably like a millimeter uh, deep gloss there and it's very high quality. Moving up here, we have two drip holes and then the hole here for the screw that secures in the lens. And then the lens itself here is I believe original. It's a GE shallow lens and looks really good. In this fixture. This is one of the few fixtures that I think actually looks better with the shallow lens. Here we can kind of get a side profile there. It's a very round and square lens depending on how you view it. So it's got some markings here on the top, GE and whatnot. And finally we get to this latch here which is just a button. Yeah, the early earlier ones were just like this. They had no uh, sort of easy way to, to open the fixture, and when these got damaged, they were a pain to open. But later fixtures, I believe 1965, they added a little protruding tab that allow you to open up the fixture much, much easier. And I have a General Electric M400 in here that has that feature. There. So... Right now, I can't open the fixture on its back, so I'm going to have to take it off video and open it that Alright, so here's the door off from the lens, the 
the fixture. And you can see it's still pretty clean on the inside. It's definitely experienced something it had, but some like buildup in it that almost reminded me of a termite's nest. Not sure exactly what it was. There's still some remnants there, but it was really, really caked on there thick. And I was able to scrape off most of it. And we got down to the bare metal here. Using just some water and towels, I was able to get this sort of finish. And if, of course, if I wanted to, I could go much deeper into it and get a really, really nice finish. So here is the thumb latch. A very complex part. And when you push on it, you can see it's just going to move like that. It's got two screws here that hold in the lens. And then a third one here that you turn to release the lens. Actually, I'm not going to do that on camera. So you have one more quick look here at the lens. Nice shallow lens made by Pyrex. Let's see. All right, is it going to focus? Uh, no, it's not going to focus. But it says made for General Electric Pyrex. There, made for General Electric. Anyway, there's that. Now moving on to the fixture here. You'll see it looks very clean on the inside. So, first of all, when I got this fixture, it was missing the mounting hardware, so I had to steal it out of my M400, so I have to get replacements. But this is for now, just so I can mount it and see what it looked like. And you'll see I had that YouTube post a while ago where I had this mounted on the pole. So, it's a very simple and user-friendly mounting system. You have this main strap here that grabs on the pole. And you have the second one here that you can loosen the two screws on the back and move this whole piece up and down to change the fixture, how it's uh, tilted, so that it's, of course, aimed properly so that it's lighting the road as efficiently as possible. And then you just have these two screws here that used to clamp on and make sure it doesn't fall off. Next here is the big ballast, the big four-coil ballast. And it's heavy. It's probably about the size of a 250 watt uh, ballast made today, and it's pretty high quality, but it is loud. So next here we have the tag, which is a nice foil tag, as GE did. And there you go. Very nice. All the information is perfectly there. And this fixture was made, as I believe I was told, January 1964 is what the date code NY translates to. So that's when this fixture was made. Next we have a terminal block here with some numbers on it that correspond to this. Super simple, but really nice because it shows you, even if you don't know what you're doing, exactly how to wire up. You can't make a mistake. Next here is the capacitor, which is replacement. I have some like, I don't know what it's called, like a Brillo pad or something under there. It's, and I'm using that because the original capacitor was much larger and I need it to be kind of firm in there. So that's, that's a new 12.5 microfarad capacitor. The original one was a 13.5, so that's kind of weird. Next here is the reflector and bulb. The bulb here I got out of my T Thomas and Betts uh, NEMA head. The original bulb that came with this fixture was actually this made in China GE one, but I just like clear mercury vapor. So again, here's the reflector. And then here's where the latch catches, and then to pull out the reflector, you just pull back on this tab. And it comes out. So then we can see the rest of the fixture here, and this is, I barely even washed this. This is basically how I, how I received it, and it's so nice and clean. It's almost perfect. I spent only about a half hour cleaning this up, and I got a really nice result. Anyway, there's the bottom of the photocell receptacle. The socket here, where you have some adjustments you can do to change the light distribution. The socket here with the neoprene gasket around it. Some other shots of that ballast. It is a beefy ballast for a 175 watt mercury vapor fixture. This may or may not be a 120 to 40 volt fixture. I'm not really certain, and I don't really know that much about ballast, but it could be. I just haven't looked. So then lastly the reflector here. You can see it's this is the, old, the first reflector I've gotten that's a perfect mirror finish. All my other ones look like this. 
on the inside. They still work, but they're not as nice looking. So there's that. And then in the back here, that's how that looks. I didn't clean it completely, but I did uh, do a decent job because this was absolutely caked when I got it. The spring latch there. And then finally, uh, this is kind of nice to see also. This neoprene gas down here, which is usually rock solid, is pretty malleable still. So now I'll get this thing back together and we'll turn it on. Alright, so I'm set up here with the fixture. Now before I turn it on, I want to say... So obviously the, replace, the capacitor has been replaced because the old one shorted out, but it was running like that for a while. So the ballast got damaged because it was being overrun. Because in these types of ballasts, the capacitor limits the current and keeps the ballast from destroying itself. So with that capacitor shorted, it was overrunning and heating up. And I luckily got it before it was completely destroyed and replaced the capacitor. So hopefully uh, it's a lower value, so it's not going to get as bright. But it should be at least at a point now where it's not destroying itself anymore. But I don't have any sort of meter or anything to test the current going into it. So I don't honestly know. And I'm not running it for a very long time. So let's try it in three, two, one. This is definitely not the loudest fixture in my collection, but it's definitely not quiet, and especially with the bad, the door open, it's not fun to listen to. It almost sounds sick. Now, in real life, it's obviously not that green. It's a nice blue color. That's pretty, it's like a white blue, it's not nearly as dramatic as the camera shows, as we know, with mercury vapor bulbs and cameras do not like to pick them up the color they wear it really are. That great General Electric logo there on the glass. And you can really see how nicely that fixture has been styled and made to look quite nice. And I really do enjoy it. It has little blips in it, you just heard. I'm not really sure what that is. I'm gonna have to ask someone because I'm not really that good at electronics and couldn't tell you. So there it is. Uh, I'm not gonna run it too much longer, but you get the idea. It's a very nice, bright fixture. So that's really it. These were fixtures that were used kind of commonly in my area, and they were pretty pretty uh, common up until like the early 2010s, and then they got replaced with American Electric 115s, and those are very common here. So I've seen a couple in my time. Those were really the first cool street lights I've seen, so I definitely have an appreciation for these. And even if it's not as cool quite as something else, I still really like the design and the fact that I grew up around some of them. Anyway, thanks to everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and as always, goodbye for now.